I'm here with Elder Freddie Johnson. When somebody comes to your center, what is it that you are able to offer them that helps them to heal from that trauma? I know that you do a lot of traditional ceremony. Okay, what, what we had to do was go back. Uh, I went to the mountain fasting and uh, when, the, when the grandfathers came, that's a difference from residential school to our culture. The grandfathers come and we can see them. Yeah. I know many people wouldn't believe that, but I've seen a lot of things and experienced a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when you see culture, culture is open. That spirituality is one thing. Eating the proper food, like the, the roots and the berries and the, the wild meat. Mm -hmm. so that's what we offer here. We try to bring them back to, to the natural medicine. And the natural medicine is everything. When you eat, eat the plants, mm -hmm. Mother Earth puts nutrients in those plants. Mm -hmm. Aromatherapy, like when we have culture, we have sweat lots, mm -hmm. we use aromatherapy. Mm -hmm. You know, when the psychologist is trying to read you, we'll, we'll call it that. I know there's probably psychologists going to be there when they're trying to read you. Aromatherapy can get into that trauma where words can't. Yes, right. When you're doing um, the, the body therapy, um, massage. Oh, massage, yes. Mm -hmm. You know the touch of the different parts of the body mm -hmm. releases that pain and you remember. Yes. Sometimes, sometimes the words, like if I'm sitting there and I'm working with a psychologist, his words go right by. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Right. Work on the body or you work with aromatherapy or you work with water, mm -hmm. working with smoke that mm -hmm. gets into your brain where words can't. Yes. Or compassion, compassion. The natural compassion is in the medicine, in all, everything. Right. So when you come here, you learn about that. You know, it's not this talk, you know. Talk's good, but talk's only just a little, you know, on the medicine wheel. Look for a medicine wheel, no medicine wheel. But when you look at the medicine wheel, there's four parts. Mm -hmm. The mental, and the emotion, physical, and the spiritual. Mm -hmm. you know, whenever you work with the mental, you improve in the other parts. If you're working on the spirit, the other, it all works the same. That's what... That's what we do here is work on the whole medicine wheel. You know? mm -hmm. and, and people in the sweat lots will will tell you stuff that you can't tell a psychologist. Right. You yeah. know, because they feel, you know, when I when I tell people, oh the eagle came into the sweat lots, they all look scared and I go, oh. Oh, well, I was scared too when it came, mm -hmm. you know. And it's a hard concept to, to, to explain or to display mm -hmm. to society. Because they look at you sideways and, you know, mm -hmm. wonder, is this man hallucinating or, you know. Because there's many cer ceremonies ac across North America, different ceremonies, not only sweat loss, there's going to the mountain, there's others. I wouldn't even name it, name them because it's not not mine. Mm -hmm. The people that do the ceremonies can talk about it, but I can't talk about that. I can talk about the sweat because it's, I did that. I can talk about the mountain because I experienced it. Right. For 20 years, going to the mountain. Every four years, you go four days 
every four years or every year for four years. So you go on okay. be 16 times you go up there. Okay. And, uh, and, and when you're alone, you can see, you can see and problem solve better when you're all alone. And the grandfathers come like they come. Mm -hmm. We have our altars set up and we have colors. We use uh, tobacco dyes of cloth and tobacco and we dye it to protect us. They can come, but they can't, you know, come under you. Like, right. you can see them over there. Animals come. Mm -hmm. Chrisley comes. Man, that's, that's scary. That's scary when they're right there, you know. I bet. 10 feet away and the, and you can't tell if that's a real grizzly or a spirit grizzly because they're uh, and yeah. so when they come they test you out to see if you'll run away mm -hmm. and that's part of the ceremony is to be you know to know your know your limits mm -hmm. you know when the elder tells you you stay there no matter how it comes you have faith in that elder Right. Yeah. And right. so when we take our clientele to the sweat lodge, we talk to them and, you know, and explain, you know, something might come. Don't mm -hmm. be alarmed. You know, this is what, this is what usually happens here. Right. And, and the, you know, the, what we believe is the grandfathers or the spirits come to help us. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, and that's the healing. When I say I don't want to talk about plane, it's because I, the spirits come and they counsel you, you know. So when you were in residential school, you were being disconnected from your culture, from your family, from your community, from yourself, from your feelings. And so the healing that you're doing is really a way to connect again. Mm. Is that how you would say that? Yes. Like to become whole? To become whole, so again, because uh, residential school was breaking you down, like mm -hmm. they break you down. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I never knew, like my tribe is a huge tribe. I never knew, I only knew of Alkali Lake. Mm -hmm. I never knew 500 miles away, our, our tribe goes, our territory. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever taught us that we learned about Europe, we learned about mm -hmm. <laughs> other countries. We never learned who we were. Right. You know, so that disconnect, Yeah. And we went to mass and, and we learned Latin. Could you imagine, you know, um, I'm trying to learn English. All of a sudden, I've been taught Latin also. Right. Or like, yeah. I can understand some words. I, I forgot it now, eh? but we used to read the hymn book in, mm -hmm. in Latin. In Latin. Uh, we sing in Latin. Right. You know, so they disconnected us, teach us another way of life. You know. And, and that was at the same time as your own ceremonies were outlawed. Yes. They were against the law. Yes. Yeah. In the eighties, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. We live on the. I was telling you, we live on this little Indian federal land, federal land, one mile square, and yet our land is two hundred miles around. You know? Right. We need a permit to hunt. We need a permit to fish salmon. You know. Last summer I heard you might need a permit to pick, to harvest berries. Could you imagine? You know, God give us all these resources. Yeah. We have to get a permit. You know, we have horses and cows. This is a, a, a Western cowboy thing. We need permits to let our horses go graze out on the land. Mm. So residential school is one thing, but uh, British Columbia, 
government is one thing, and then the federal, which so we're run under uh, British Columbia law, and we're under federal law. Right. You know, so and colonialism. Even today, is... even today, we still suffer. Yes. You know, yeah. yeah. They're holding us down. Yeah. You know, so. Mm -hmm. so you mentioned forgiveness. How yes. is that, how is that possible? given everything that's happened, how do you work with that? I call this guy my mentor. I wouldn't name his name. My friend asked him, what is forgiveness? Mm -hmm. I set up because I want to hear this because with all the things I'm telling you, I had to forgive. Mm -hmm. I can't go to heaven if I don't <laughs> Right. But God knows, Great Spirit knows. Anyway, this is what he said. Forgiveness happens. If you look at a medicine wheel, the mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, if you practice all these positive things, there's no room for blame. Okay. You can't grow with blame. Right. Like our center, people come here, they can't grow if they hold blame on their yeah. parents or institution or, you know, whatever it is. All the negative stuff, we can't go forward. You know, we're going to get our land back, but we can't get our land back if we blame. But if right. we look positive, you yeah. know, we talk about our land, it's our land. We don't say, oh, it's uh, federal land or it's, you right. know, we, we don't talk like that. That's our land. Right. Yes, they're using it, but, you know, there's, there's laws that protect us, but I don't think the forest companies know that we're protected, you know. Right. If you keep, if we keep some data, you took out ten million. You don't have to keep out some of that money, right? You right. Know, you can't get away with it. There's been a lot of injustice. Yeah. 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 I mean, you look what's happening down there now, back east. I don't even want to mention right. uh, where the trouble is, but yeah, they have, they have treaties. But could you watch what's, what's going on? What's it really mean? Mm -hmm. People are being shot and been arrested and, you know. Yeah. And I'm and in yet they, where they're having the trouble yeah. with lobster fishing right now. Yeah. 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 And we have troubles in British Columbia too. Yeah. You know? yeah. But uh, we all of us know this in truth. You can't lie the truth. They can lie on their paper, but one day they're gonna to have to, you know, be truthful. So when you talk about blame and other things, there's no room for, you know. So when a client come here, we work with them and tell them, uh, you know, well, this happened. Okay, yeah, okay. We have a history, <laughs> you know. Right, right, so, right. So one of the things that I find is really hard to work with is shame. You know, especially with addiction, we're so shamed for having an addiction and we feel shame for the things we've done. How, how does that work for you at the center, for you personally? I'm just thinking. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I guess... When I dealt with my shame, with my abuse, mm -hmm. lots of abuses in residential school, mentally, emotional, physical, spiritual, mm -hmm. sexual. Yeah. When I look at all those, and I look at when, when I when I you you get strapped, I, you you take you stand there like this, and they're equipping you with a leather. Mm -hmm. Two inches wide and a you know, quarter inch thick, and they jump, 
to like really... you're not just doing this. They jump with all their might, and you're there, and this is just red and swollen. Yeah. We never cried. We never give them the pleasure. Mm. I don't know where it come from when you're six years old, but it came from, you know, somewhere. You can beat me, but I'm not going to let you see me cry. Mm. So when I, when I, when you talk about shame and the people that did that on our bodies, mm -hmm. on our head, on our backs and bum, mm -hmm. our legs. How I overcome that was I went to a trauma training mm -hmm. and realized that today, I think it's harder when you're not working on growth, but today when I work on growth, I look at that priest or that brother that was doing that, that happened to that person. Right. And that person, somebody else did that too. Mm -hmm. It came down the line like this to me. Yeah. So that rage that he has is not mine. It's only now I can say that, but before I carried rage. Right. Yeah. I have to say I carried rage. But when I took that trauma training, realized that wasn't mine. And it was easier to let that shame go. Right. I was going to take off my coat, but I threw it on the floor. Mm -hmm. I took off my coat of shame. I uh, threw it down. Right. It's right. not mine. It's that person. And then that's that person. Yeah. When I talk about the first prime minister, where did that come from? Then you got to look, where did it come from? It come from somebody yeah. that taught him that. It was pretty brutal in Europe. Mm, you know, white people. Yeah. And, and the people that sat around the table with him, Right. where did that come from? Mm -hmm. That When I look at that, then I realize that not mine. So that helps to let the shame move yeah. through and move up. That's his shame, not mine, but he passed it on to me. But right. now I took off my coat of shame. Right. right. So I could right. walk forward, you know. So when we sat on the table to get our land back, I want to sit there without shame and without guilt. Right. You yeah. know. So that's my power. I have my power. Or when you talk community, we have our power. Right. You know, and, and that you're you, not passing that on to your grandchildren. Yeah. Yeah. I talk to them and tell them that, you know, don't let Papa, you know, mm -hmm. don't take whatever Papa's got, you know, right. and explain to them this what happened. Like to children that knelt on the floor and wondered what was going on. I yeah. explained to them. That's what they did to us for being too noisy. Right. You know, and they're so not like that. The school is different here. I went down, I was surprised. They're talking, telling stories in the language to them. Eh? Right. I felt good for that. I didn't have that opportunity. But right. you know what? My grandparents gave me that opportunity before I went. Okay. Know? Mm -hmm. So the language and the storytelling came to me and was still in here, yeah. even though I was in a foreign situation, mm -hmm. I held it here. You had it in your body, yeah. in your heart, yeah. So in 1977, when we took training for one-on-one -on -one counseling, the company from Alberta, mm -hmm. and he said, tonight, we're going to let you talk to the elder. So I went, and I'm still coming from playing, even though I was trained yeah. to be a counselor. I'm mm -hmm. coming with blame and shame, killed. And I told that elder, he beat me at residential school. They took my language. And this is what I said. What are you going to do about it now? It just sucked me. I thought he was going to hold me and let me cry on the shoulder. No, he didn't. 
said, what are you going to do about it now? From that moment on, I would speak my language when I, I would answer the phone. So if you'd call me, I would answer you in Shuswap. Mm -hmm. And then I'll talk to you and make you feel, <laughs> not laugh, not laugh again. Okay, I'll talk English. <laughs> right, right, right. So you're really part of what's turned, allowed your community to heal. Yes. Yeah. Um, right. When I, when I took that one-on-one -on -one counseling and, and stuff, and there was about 20 of us in, a, in, in our session, there was other sessions that followed. Mm -hmm. They said, only one of you is going to make it to be a counselor. Oh. And it was me. Mm -hmm. I went on and, did, you know, learned more, more and more. Yeah. And I, and I end up doing that kind of work. Mm. 40 years. Clients come here. Yeah. I could tell them I laid in a ditch. I laid in a ditch trunk. 30. Right. I didn't even get up to go to the washroom. I just laid there and go to the washroom. Right. So they all kind of look shocked. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All wet from uh, going to the washroom. And I was too lazy to get up over there. And then when I was in trunk tank, I would tell them I was in a trunk tank. Mm -hmm. The guy on this side, he, he, he went to washroom and the guy on this side went to washroom and I can tell them that that's where I came from. Right. I went down. I went to college for four years. Mm -hmm. Didn't mean, I'm not saying it didn't mean nothing, but when I was in my addiction, that didn't mean nothing. Right, right. You no. Know? Yeah. If people would say, Freddie, you're going to be on a street, I would never believe them, but I ended up on the street, you know. Mm -hmm. And I always think about that. Maybe the creator let me experience that because he was going to put me to work somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And here I am. I was supposed to be retired for five years. Now I'm still here. But I don't, I don't mind, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. I can share my story, the, the anger, the rage, self-pity, you name it. I can yeah. tell them that I did that. Yeah. You know? And people can see that you've healed. And that's really, it's really important for people to have that living example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 I, it took me two years to realize that I was two years sober and... I nearly got killed, and I look at that and I thought, you have something else for me to do? I realized that I had a job. Right. He, he didn't let me die because I had another job to do. Right. And that was to share my story. Yeah, to help people, yeah. Yeah, to help people and, yeah. you know, keep, you know, to talk about the same and said it's not yours. Yeah. But it's easy to say, but you gotta work, you know, you gotta help them. Yeah. Not help them, but assist them mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. Mm. What's it like for younger people now in your community, like teenagers and younger adults? Are they healthier? Are they drinking? Are they what's okay, happening? there's 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 I think both drinking and doing trucks. Yeah. You know. Not all of them. There mm -hmm. is some. Mm -hmm. There are some that don't don't use. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. And it's a different atmosphere. You know. It's a more it's like a more loving atmosphere rather than that rage and guilt. Uh, mm -hmm. you know. And there's a lot of people that's in wellness, you know, that's which makes it good. Yes, yeah. But there is drinking and there, there is, is sucking, you know. But they don't, um, they don't do it like the way we used to do it. We, was, um, we went all out. I mean, they do it, but, they, you know, there's guns and knives, man, when, when we're 
our community was in its deepest fifth. Yeah. Guns and knives, stabbings and shootings. Right. It rank, but I don't, I don't see that, you know. The, it's not that level. It's a different level, you yeah. know. Like, yeah. So, but, yeah. you know, I'm always concerned, eh? you know, if your personality, your personality is that, you know, to get addicted. Mm -hmm. I, I have relatives out there on the street sleeping in the cold right now, today. Right. You know. That's hard. And, and, and they've suffered that trauma, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, one of my nieces told me, I want to quit, but I can't. She would come back. She has children here, right? Like we're looking after one. My daughter's looking after another one, and my in-laws looking after two. So she has four children. Okay. One died a year ago, stillborn, mm. and but she's still out there. Mm. She come back. She can only let, if she lasts here two days. That's great. Visit her children. And, mm -hmm. And then she's got to go back. She'll tell you straight, I got to go back. Can't go without drinking or using yeah. drugs. Right. Like she knows it's no good, but yeah. the chronic yeah. experiences, it's, you know, and it's hard, it's difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. And she knows we're here, right. but she's not ready to come here. But that's scary because... Yeah. Williamson, I, I shouldn't even say the name, but that town is so dangerous. Anywhere, I guess, is dangerous. Mm -hmm. And you, things could happen. And things right. happen here in our, in our mm -hmm. vicinity. You know, bad things, right. shootings, and people disappear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, trucks is pretty serious. Eh? You know? Yeah, so, it is. Mm. So the difference, part of the difference is that now people have you and the recovery center and there's a lot of people in the community that are reliable and that they could connect with. That's not something you had when you were no, younger. No. No. Um, like our leadership is so supportive. Mm -hmm. They come here when new clients come. Oh. You welcome them to the community and whenever you need help, they open their arms and, mm -hmm. you know. So they're, they're not just coming here. They're, like the leaders know they're here. Right, but right. At the same time, there's confidentiality. Okay, you're here. You do your work, but we're here if you need anything. Yeah. So it's a very supportive. The community is very supportive. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the different managers are supportive, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, and and the community uh, runs their own programs with with community members or other native people. Mm -hmm. So suits, so you know, people are more compassionate. I'm not saying that outside people are not compassionate, but we try to use we use our own community people to work. And they're right. trained people. Eh? To, yeah. Mm -hmm. We have uh, professionally trained community members, which makes a difference. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but, uh, you know, we have to help each other, support each other. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when they need spiritual support, they, they call on the people that do the ceremonies. Right. You know, when we do pipe, over 20 people. We can't do that now with a right, with COVID. pandemic, mm -hmm. you know. We can't even, you know, like even now, we can't even, six people, we can. Oh. When, when we do pipe, we just pray on their shoulders. Oh, I see, right. We can't smoke it. 
Right. Oh. Even with uh, H1N1, we couldn't smoke it. Oh. You know, so yeah. you just hold it and, and yeah. you touch people on the shoulders and they pray and you pray. Right. We have to find other ways to do it. Mm -hmm. The challenge today, like if we go to a major center and we go in the building, you can make smoke. Right. With the shade or the pipe. Yeah. We have to find other ways, get a bowl of water and this. Mm -hmm. Prayer and is prayer. Still connect inside, but not yeah. the same. Yeah. So. yeah. But we can smoke it like, you know, if I'm by so. myself, I could smoke it. Right. You know? right. But I can't let anybody else smoke it, but they're there. Right. You know? So the challenge is there, you know. Mm. And Right. And like you go to uh, Williams Lake, they don't let you, they tell you straight up front, you can't do any smoke. Okay. You just lighten the sage or lighten the pipe. Mm. What they say, it might set off the fire alarm. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. Right. You know, <laughs> I never seen it happen, but right. I guess they're scared it might. I don't know. Right, yeah. Yeah. So there's challenges in, you know, different ways. So, and we just go around it, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, with so many people being disconnected, you know, with trauma, people feel so alone and, and like they're not worth anything. So for them to have a place where they can come and a community of people who care, I mean, that's almost the whole thing that they need for healing, just that caring. Yes. And, you know, again, that's a challenge. You know, the funding for that, it's a challenge. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. um, if we can get people to believe in, you know, like we've lost so many people, like two yeah. soldiers I was telling you about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I watch, this, I watch this on TV. This guy sat at McDonald's. I think these, these killed a person. Uh, the psychologist came. I'm watching this, and they, and they're helping all the people that witness that. Right. The community, nobody's coming here. Right. You know that's a difference. You know. Yeah, yeah, and that's there's so much injustice. Yeah. Yeah. So last week, they told me after six years in planning. They have an indigenous court in Williams Lake. Oh, wow. Where the First Nations people and the Metis mm -hmm. would go to court in the indigenous court. They have, a, they have a judge there, but they have elders there. Yeah. And they do the, that's where they're going to do the smoke. Eh? Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. But oh. we have four different tribes in our area. So, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've been the residential school together, uh -huh. you know, the four tribes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so we know our hurts. Right. Yeah. Three years ago, six of my friends that I went to school with, I'm 70. So they were maybe like in their 60s and they died. Just like if they died. Six, wow. When I took trauma training, mm -hmm. I read on the bottom, there was a whole list of things. On the bottom it said, trauma kills. Yes. You mm -hmm. don't need to see anything. You just die from the trauma experience. Yeah. Yeah. Six of my friends just in one, like six mm -hmm. months died. Like with seem like with no reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a reason, trauma. Yes, absolutely. All yeah. bottled in here. Yeah. They never had that opportunity to take any kind of training. Mm -hmm. Bottled here and too much for the body. It is too much for the body, yeah. I have Lord. yeah. I have classmates 70, but when they were 60 in wheelchairs and walkers. Right. 
because he never do any wellness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? And and it's boiled in and it comes out on your body. Yeah. Yeah. Comes oh, out. Yeah. yeah. You know. It's really hard on our nervous system and our whole body. Mm -hmm. It's all one system. So yeah. it makes sense that it affects everything. Yeah. And you give up, like you give up. Yeah, many people do. So what, what keeps you going? Why haven't you given up? Um, a lot of training and, um, well, I'll tell you, I went to the mountain for 20 years. Mm. That mm. I had to deal with, a, you know, look at a lot of things. Eh? Yeah, yeah. You know? And just let it go up there. Let it go, you know, through prayer and, mm -hmm. you know, ceremony, let it go. Yeah. You know. Freddie was one of the main actors in the documentary, The Honor of All, about the Alkali Lake Band. He was also asked to go to treatment in the film, which changed a lot of his world. Um, did you watch that movie? I did, yeah. Yeah, when Andy was giving me a heck there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a um, an amazing transformation personally, and for the community. My dad was in there. You've seen my dad. That's my dad. Okay. It sucked me that he went in there. My mom said, "Oh, that Freddy. I don't know what's gotten into him." For fifty years, let's see, for seventy years, we've been neglected. Mm -hmm. Terribly neglected. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's 19, oh, 2020. Mm -hmm. Finally got a building. Finally. People came here from all over the world. We had nothing, nothing. Oh, okay. So we've been neglected. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have no nice buildings. If you come here, we can't even put you up. Okay. That's in we're poor. I guess we, we just don't have facilities. Mm -hmm. And for 200 years, we've been neglected. Mm -hmm. I'm getting political now. Yes, yeah. Well, it is a political You said, yeah. said on the number one reserve in Alkali Lake, mm -hmm. one, mile, one mile square. And yet our territory is 200 miles around. People right. are logging, people are mining, people are taking our fish. Yeah. And we have to get permit to fish, to hunt. We can't even log. And right. yet, if you come to Williams Lake, you'll see all the logging trucks going to Williams Lake. Right. And none of that uh, monetary not coming here. Not coming for you. Yeah. So we've been neglected. We've been... Um, stolen away, or however you say it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So it's a bad story. It is a bad story, isn't it? And, and you it's know, it's probably we'll... like that all over North America. It is, yeah. You know, yeah. people yeah. taking advantage of the first people. Yeah. Now, Absolutely. all I tell people when I go outside in society, when you meet God, you can lie to him. You can lie to us, you can lie on paper, mm -hmm. but you can lie to the creator and that's how we come. So when you ask about this building, it's a miracle. Mm -hmm. Our chief, Sarlene Pellew, got the funding to put this facility here to help people from all over Canada. Right. We have people, our people from the community don't even come to this facility. So it's mostly yes. people from other places. Yes. And oh. we don't, we get to build this building, but the funding that there's some funding for the staff and there's no funding for the clientele. So, you know, we have to fund that ourselves. Oh, okay. So that, that's okay. bad. You know, people, you know, I don't want to name any, 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 um, you know, people. Uh, people from town or, you know, institutions, they don't put nothing into this. Our community has to fund this. 
Right. We have this nice building, but we fall through the cracks. Like right. people, because of our history of being sober and, and doing well, they figure we can do this. And we do. We, we can do this. We have many people that are well, mm -hmm. you know, that are, you know, survive all everything thrown at us for the past 200 years. Right. We have, we don't blame. That's the main thing we don't blame. We uh -huh. can, I can tell you some stuff, but we don't want to blame, but we keep working hard. And I know somehow, you know, something good will come our way. Right. You know? so, so you were around, you were in the community when this all happened, started happening in the seventies. And what was your experience during that time? Um, I guess we have three hours. <laughs> we have as much time as you want. <laughs> <laughs> we could have a long video at your conference. Um, yeah, I've been around uh, born in 1948 mm -hmm. after the war. And I've witnessed as a child, the people that came back from the war, they were violent. Yeah. When they drank, when they drank. And you know what? We were outlawed to have alcohol, but somehow we made it mm -hmm. and drank. Mm. From then on, all hell broke loose, you know. Right. So I've seen these violent people, and they all died. All the soldiers died. Oh, okay. Some of them were my relatives. Right. They died from alcoholism. Mm -hmm. You know, I think even today, people, you know, are not diagnosed for, you know, whatever they suffered during right. the war. Yeah. And they, they drank to get rid of that what they saw and what they ex and for shooting people. Mm -hmm. And there was no help for them. Right. And then they were promised land. Right. Never happened. Mm -hmm. So, you know, where, you know, I don't like talking about this because it's negative, but right. you know, we have to look at it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Con the conference people have to look at that, and it's probably happening in their community, you know. Right. Yeah. And, um, so in 1953, had the opportunity to attend residential school. I went for 70 opportunity. Um, I was glad to go. Mm -hmm. I was happy. Till I got over there. Yeah. Uh, story. Yeah. You know? Through the hurt of residential school, I was being taken away from the community, from my parents, my grandparents, yeah. my aunts and uncles and my cousins. Well, I was with the weirdest thing. I was over there with community members, never knew them, never knew them. Oh, you know, okay. I, I could look at different people and they say, I wonder, I, say, I don't remember them. I was young and we're all separated. Eh? Mm -hmm. There was junior, senior, uh, seniors, intermediate, and juniors, right. and we never interacted. So the seniors would be like 14, 15, 16. As an eight year old, six years old, I never interacted with them. Right. We were cut. We were cut. So, yeah. whatever, you know, that residential school was designed for, I did the job. You yes. Know, I don't yeah, know my parents. I right. don't know my parents. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the people that I went to residential school, I had more love for them than my parents. Right. I was cut from them. Yeah. And it was, they were like strangers. Mm -hmm. I could never tell them, oh, I'm, 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 I'm hurt. Mm -hmm. And he would hold me. Nobody holds you when you got hurt. Mm -hmm. I was separated from my brothers and sisters. Right. And, you know, that you can't even explain the pain that is upset. Oh, yeah, unimaginable. Yeah. 
and you go to that institution, which was four story building with 300 students, mm. that pain from going from here, where you had horses and animals and, mm. you know, and you went to an institution where you marched around like little soldiers. We right. did, we marched to school, we marched to eat, we marched back from school, we all knelt down and did the rosary every night. Okay. So my Indianness, I, I shouldn't even be using that term because I'm not an Indian. They're across there in Ocean somewhere. I'm in a India. Swap, yeah. swapping, you know, that mm -hmm. went to that institute. I said I, I lied. I said I wasn't going to name anybody. But John A. McDonald, in his statement, will take that Indian out of that child. And they did. And you they know. did. Yeah. I don't Tragic. I don't have feelings. You know, I've seen death. I don't have feelings. The day I, when you, you're talking about, well, how is it today? I have to try to get those feelings back. I have to try to bring the tears. I have to try to right. feel good about myself, to believe in myself, you know, right. and to be a, we were never trained to be a good dad, to be a good uncle, yes. to be a good grandfather. We were never, you know, yeah. my children probably suffered just as much as I suffered because I pass it to them, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I said I wasn't going to name names, but um, this this man ran across Canada. He made it halfway, and he died from that cancer. And he said, "Somewhere, oh, Terry the hurt, Fox. Somewhere the hurt must stop." And I wanted to stop with my grandchildren. I don't want my grandchildren to feel that pain, you know. Mm -hmm. um, this morning we were praying. Soldiers were praying. You know what? Some of my young people can pray in their language. I can pray in my language. Yeah. It'll be 50%, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was when I see stolen. That right. We were punished. Our mouth was, and we were hit speaking our language. We're speaking your language, right? Yeah. Yeah, they were very serious. I was down to school. Yeah. I was down to school last week to mm -hmm. teach our, my grandchildren the language. Oh, good. I said, everybody kneel down. So they all knelt down, they're looking at me. I said, you know what? When I was a child, we spoke our language, we had to kneel for hours right. to stop us from talking. Punishment, yeah. Punishment. That must have been terrifying. And if you look all across Canada, probably United States, mm -hmm. addiction to all the drugs and alcohol and gambling comes from that. It's a trauma response. Trauma. Yeah. Sure. You want to feel happy, you could uh, drink yeah. or you could a uh, bingo, you mm -hmm. know, or gambling. Get away from that feeling of being yeah. dead inside. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, in 1953, I went as a five year old, five years old, you know, mm. there were 300 of us there. It's like a slow moving train. Eh? Mm -hmm. the, the people that were 16 got kicked out right. and we came in you and we got the 16, we went on yeah. and it kept going like clock like water. Yeah. You know, and, and that was a systematic, you know, yeah. I, I don't even like to see the word genocide, but I hear people saying that. Yeah. But they were trying to kill something in us, you know, yeah. we didn't make it, you know, because we're still here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when people come to our center here, we look at the trauma. Let's deal with the trauma before even look at addiction. Yeah. As that's a trauma you're trying to yeah. smoke or you're putting stuff in your arm. 
Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I went there for seven years. I went there for three years. And then I went three years to school. Then I went back for three years. Mm -hmm. And then when I graduated in grade nine in residential school, they sent us to a Catholic school in Prince George. Oh. And, and we were still in the system. That's a long way from home, though. Prince George from here is like three-hour drive or yeah. four-hour drive. Yeah. No. Mm. She mentioned, uh, Laurie mentioned the kettle truck. Yes. The farm outside, it's uh, two below. But could you imagine was 25 below and we're going on the road in the back of a kettle truck? Yeah. You know. If you try to tell me, Freddie, you're smart, you're intelligent, I feel like a cow. I feel like a cow is standing back in this truck. And you can tell me, Freddie, you can do this. And I said, no, I can't do that. I can't, I'm not smart, you know. You don't have to tell me in words. You don't have yeah. to tell me in words about, you know, building up myself. I know what the church thinks about me as a resource. I was a resource. You know, when you look at the residential school, our first nation's people was a resource. You know, so yeah, I, I didn't want to talk negative, but you know. <laughs> but it's a horrible. It's sad. It's yeah, horrible. It's sad. Yeah, it's yeah, sad. yeah, 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 and yeah. I passed it down to my son and my daughter. Oh, that's heartbreaking. And and they drank. Yeah, okay. And you know, no. I have to tell you about my dad. My dad, and my uncles got hung up, died up. Oh, got dear. Hung up on the post. Yeah. And last, last, harness leather, seven layers thick four feet long with buckles on each end, mm. speaking their language. And for, and, yeah. and for resisting that. Right. My uncle described this. He said he got last seven times. Yeah. Three, he got hit three times. He passed out. He hit him four more times. This passed out already. Why hit him anymore? Yeah, exactly. That yeah. man was carrying something on his back. Yeah. Just hit four more times, like. Yeah. So I carry that. That's my uncle. I right. carry that. My my dad, my uncles did happen to that. That's just my rel my relatives. Imagine the other boys. Rage, yeah. So I carry that from my family and I carry the rage. When I see that church, there's a different Freddy. Mm. I see residential school. The church is separate, but in a little child, yes, it's still the same. Still the same. So we yeah. carry this, you know, and I carry the rage. I never knew why. Did mm. I hurt my uncle? Right, yes. I heard my relative talking. My dad said, ask him. And he said. Right. My dad couldn't say it, but his okay. friend or my relative or cousin. Right. Yeah. He told the story. Yeah. You know, he was, I don't know if he was ashamed of it or just rageful about it, but he wouldn't talk about it. Okay. It was too hard. So, yeah. to let that go, you know, and pray for them. Mm -hmm. My uncle may talk about it, but my dad, my other uncle couldn't talk about it. Yeah. They were all rageful. You yeah. know, you were good people. You were good. And traumatized. But if my dad walked in that door, Laurie would be running. Oh, okay. Like he had this energy. Oh, mm -hmm. this rageful energy and I think that's mm -hmm. when we look at people that went to residential school we have this 
energy that could be rage, shame, guilt, you name it. Right. And when they walk in, you feel it. Yeah. You know. And somehow with healing, we have to, we have to feel that somehow. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. It's it's difficult because they're they don't want to share that that guilt and that shame is so thick. Yeah. Not, you know. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes the psychologist is not the one that's going to help that person. No. Mm -hmm. Not saying psychology doesn't work, but I think somebody who's compassionate to what that experiences can help that person. Yeah. An elder, what they call quill medicine man. Thank you so much, Freddie, for for talking with me and and just kind of explaining some of what your experiences were. And I wish so much that it wasn't still going on, you know, that there was justice now at least, and I know there isn't. There's 200 years bottled up in here. Yeah. Of the people that you're talking about, it's still bottled up here. Yeah, yeah. I listened to my friend, he talked about the pandemic that happened nearly 200 years ago, came in the blankets mm -hmm. and wiped in our area. When I point this way, I'm pointing west. Mm -hmm. 10,000 people died. Oh. So they, they cut our population down. They did what they wanted to do. That's what I guess what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. And I feel that. Yeah. Or let me reword that. I felt that. Yeah. Okay. Now I have to forgive. Right. However that came about, however, whatever that was supposed to happen, happened that way. Yeah. But we're still here, but they're still exploiting our resources. And that's they what are. we wanted, you know. Yeah. They're still exploiting us, you know. And I hope there's government people at your conference could hear that mm -hmm. they're exploiting us. Yeah. Yeah. We just take what we need. We don't need to take anything to heaven. You can't take it to heaven anyway. Exactly. Let them know that you guys can't take that to heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm talking will be on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, thank you for this opportunity. I was kind of uh, um, hesitant. Mm -hmm. You know, because uh, even, even our story gets um, get misused, you know, right. so yeah. I'm hesitant about that. Right. You know. I really appreciate that you, that you talked with me. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Welcome to the 2021 Radical Recovery Summit presented by the Killaby Center for Recovery. This is Lynn Fraser, your moderator. This year, our theme is Feel It, Heal It, a new paradigm of recovery featuring a diverse group of thought leaders and innovators people who are working on the ground in the new field of addiction recovery. Go to RadicalRecoverySummit.com to sign up and watch free.